May the glorious light of the Son of God shine upon you. The abiding love of the Father fill your hearts and the peace of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Let us pray. Father, keep before us the wisdom and love you have revealed in your Son. Help us to be like him in word and deed, for he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our reading this noon comes from 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, beginning at the 11th verse. Therefore, knowing the fear of the Lord, we persuade others, but what we are is known to God, and I hope it is known also to your conscience. We are not commending ourselves to you again, but giving you cause to boast about us, so that you may be able to answer those who boast about outward appearance and not about what is in the heart. For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ controls us because we have concluded this, that one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. From now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh, even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh, we regard him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone in is, is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, Christ, God, that is in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the mes message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him, we might become the righteousness of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our reading this noon uh, comes from uh, C.S. Lewis, uh, and it's from his work, Mere Christianity. We are told that Christ was killed for us that his death has washed out our sins, and that by dying, he disabled death itself. That is the formula. That is Christianity. That is what has to be believed. Any theories we build up as to how Christ's death did all this are, in my view, quite secondary. Mere plans or diagrams to be left alone if they do not help us and even if they do help us not to be confused with the thing itself. All the same, some of these theories are worth looking at. One most people have heard is the one I mentioned before, the one about our being left off because Christ had volunteered to bear a punishment instead of us. Now, on the face of it, that is a very silly theory. If God was prepared to let us off, why on earth did he not do so? And what possible point could there be in punishing an innocent person instead? None at all that I can see. If you are thinking of punishment in the police court sense, 
On the other hand, if you think of a debt, there is plenty of point in a person who has some assets paying it on behalf of someone who has not. Or if you take, quote, paying the penalty, not in the sense of being punished, but more in the general use of, quote, standing the racket or, quote, footing the bill, then, of course, it is a matter of common experience that when one has got himself into a hole, the trouble of getting him out usually falls upon a kind friend. Now, what sort of, quote, hole has had man dug himself into? He had tried to set up on his own, to behave as if he belonged to himself. In other words, fallen man is not simply an imperfect creature who needs improvement. He is a rebel who must lay down his arms. This process of surrender, this movement full speed astern, is what Christians call repentance. Now, repentance is no fun at all. It is something much harder than merely eating humble pie. It means unlearning all the self-conceit and self-will that we have been training ourselves into for thousands of years. It means killing part of yourself, undergoing a kind of death. In fact, it needs a good man to repent. And here comes the catch. Only a bad person needs to repent. Only a good person can repent perfectly. The worse you are, the more you need it, and the less you can do it. The only person who could do it perfectly would be a perfect person, and he would not need it. That concludes C.S. Lewis's reflection. And of course, the person who did not need it was Jesus, and we all need it very, very badly. Uh, and uh, so what a wonderful reading as we come to the end of the Epiphany season and are going to be beginning the Lenten journey, which is a journey of repentance, a return to the Lord our God, which will start uh, on Ash Wednesday, a week from today. And uh, there's just a, a lot to ponder in, in that reading. Uh, and especially, it is very helpful, the analogy of a debt paid for us by our Savior. And that we then, out of gratitude for what has been done for us, the forgiveness and reconciliation to God, it is out of that gratitude that we pray the Spirit strengthens us for service in Christ's name, because we can't earn it. And when we think we've got some kind of plan, that's a surefire time when we need to step back and return to the Lord our God in repentance, in confession, and be forgiven, reconciled, and renewed again. It's an ongoing process. I know these days we like to be once and done, uh, but uh, we are on this journey. And we give thanks that though so much changes and twists and turns in our daily lives, that we know for sure what our Savior has done, and that through him, we are part of God's beloved family, and nothing can separate us from God's love in Christ Jesus. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen.